Boss strategies are essential techniques in speedruns that go beyond mere understanding of boss's behavior. A lot of those strategies involve glitches and movement or animation exploits of the boss in order to defeat it as fast as possible. This makes bosses look very simple when watching a speedrun. However, it isn't visible just how much practice went into finding and executing those strategies. In this video, we will have a look at the bosses of Majora's Mask. While there aren't many bosses as there are in other games, the these sure have a lot of depth to them. We will cover the techniques done in the original version of the game, as some of the bosses were drastically changed in the 3DS remake. So let's have a look at those bosses and the strategies that can be used for the bosses of Majora's Mask, starting with Odolwa. Even though Odolwa has two faces, he pretty much never activates the second one during a fight in a speedrun. Oddly enough, it doesn't even really matter if the runner messes up or not, which makes us assume that a certain time needs to pass during the fight for this face to activate, which then summons all sorts of bugs and moths. In the original N64 version, this fight is very straightforward. Stun Odolwa with an arrow and deal damage. However, there are a few things that you can do to speed up this fight. One of the fastest ways, which is also done in the English run of the game, is to stun Odolwa and just quick spin the hell out of him. This works due to Odolwa having a frame window in his animation that allows him to become vincible again while still being in the knockdown animation. The Japanese speedrun uses this even more. Before entering the fight, it performs a jump slash into the cutscene, which gives the crouch step the same power as the jump slash itself. In here, we can now stun Odolwa right away and time our crouch steps to keep Odolwa in a stun lock. After 10 steps, he goes down without much of a fight. Also, another side note, you might have noticed the bomb flowers on the side of the boss arena. These might seem pointless at first, but they deal multiple hits of damage to Odolwa if they hit. If it just wasn't so hard to hit with those, especially because Odolwa usually just jumps away once there is a bomb nearby. There are hardly any differences between the Japanese and the English version of the runs. The only real difference between the two is the fact that Link gets run over by Goth at the beginning of the fight, while that isn't the case on the Japanese version. This seems like a very minor fact, however due to the player being able to move right after the cutscene stopped, he can be too fast for Goth to stop and wait for Link in a specific spot. In order to understand it better, let's explain the fight and how it's done in speedruns. It doesn't really matter whether we have to grow a mask or not for this fight, since the fastest way is shooting him with arrows. But in order to shoot him with arrows properly, we need to keep Goff in a specific position. This is basically done by being too slow and behind him, which will force Goff to turn around and start shooting us with electric lightning if we're in range. If we are not in range for a long time, Goff will start running in the opposite direction, which is something we want to prevent. Using the strategy we just explained, the fight will look like like this. Follow Goth up to the next corner as human Link and stand on a specific spot. Aim just past the corner and hit him with an arrow, then side hop to the right twice in order to get into his line of sight, and then side hop twice to the left again to get out of it. This will force Goth to attack us once, which has a high chance of missing us due to the travel time of the attack. In addition, doing so will reset Goth's charge timer, keeping him in place even longer. By doing this, we shoot him with 14 arrows and time it in a way that Goth will start charging towards us as we are sending the 15th arrow flying. By doing so he is defeated and the remains plus the heart container spawn right in front of us. However in the Japanese version there's a chance that Goff will not stop at the second corner if we reach the first one too quickly, even as Human Link. This happens because we don't get run over by Goth and thus have less distance to travel. It's a fairly minor difference overall but can make a huge difference in speedruns. This boss fight is fairly scary the first time the player deals with it due to the amount of damage Georg deals. However, if done right, this fight is actually fairly easy. As we enter the boss room, we can damage Georg and skip the introduction cutscene by either performing a weird shot and then hitting him from under the ground, or extend our bow beyond the wall in the back and hit him from there. After doing this, we can just jump down and don't have to bother with his introduction. Georg will charge at us and we have to stun him by either using an arrow, the hookshot or the Zora fins. Optimally, we stun him right before he either charges the platform or jumps out of the water as that will force him to be stuck in place as he gets out of the stun again. We can now jump into the water as Zora Link and use our barrier to damage him, which we can repeat as Georg is stuck in place as he is only swimming against the platform. 
On the Japanese version, we can only use the Zora Barrier while swimming at full speed. This makes the fight a little harder in comparison to the English version. Because in this version, we can use the Zora Barrier whenever we want in water, allowing us to just sink to the bottom and follow Georg's movements with a shield up. Either way, this fight isn't really hard at all and isn't really much of a run ender during speedruns. Twin Mold is probably the hardest fight among all of them. Most runs don't use the Giant's Mask for this fight due to several inconsistencies and having to rely even more on luck than one has to do already in this fight. This fight is not only heavily skill-based, but also heavily luck-based, making it a fairly common run-ender. Now, each Twin Mold has 20 HP. A Sword Slash with the Kokiri Sword deals 1 damage, while an Arrow and a Bomb deal 2. In addition, both Twin Molds have elemental weaknesses. The blue one is weak to Fire Arrows, and the red one is weak to Ice Arrows, which deal triple damage. Also, both Twin Molds take double damage from Light Arrows. Due to this, the blue Twin Mold is dealt with fairly quickly by using using a bomb at the beginning of the fight, and three more fire arrows. The red one is a little trickier, as a lot of speedruns don't have ice arrows at this point, so they have to use light arrows. And as magic runs out fairly quickly, the player has to shoot normal arrows at a certain point. This is a problem for a lot of beginners. Not only does the remaining twin mold move faster than before, but the arrow speed also depends on whether you are using normal or magic arrows. Fire, ice and light arrows arrows fly significantly slower than other arrows do, which makes getting the timing down a very difficult task. If you run out of arrows, which is likely during the first runs, you can use the rocks and pillars to get new ones and magic. The only thing the player has to do here is stand next to them, which will force Twinmall to attack Link and thus destroy them. Obviously, it's best to never get into this situation, but in some runs you have to deal with as little as 18 arrows for the entire fight. And as you can imagine, that's not enough for most players. After shooting Twin Mold with a maximum of 10 arrows, he goes down, and we can grab our well deserved heart container and Twin Mold's remains. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell because YouTube has been really bad at notifications recently, as far as we noticed. Also, if you want to check out other videos, please do so, and we'll see you in the next one.